Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. We're continuing our lead story, the mockumentary that was shot down in flames with facts. Let's, get, uh, let's uh, get some reactions to this pathetic attempt to once again create chaos in Sri Lanka by the LTTE diaspora backed UK's Channel 4. Let's bring in parliamentarian Prayer Admiral Sarath Virasekara. Sir, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Um, your reactions to this so-called groundbreaking video by a well-known fab fabricator? Well, my is, um, if someone believed that uh, uh, nine Muslim extremists and a pregnant mother with their children uh, commit suicide to pave the way for a single Buddhist leader to become the president of this country, I think that is ridiculous. So these institutions like Channel 4, funded by NGOs and uh, the separatist Tamil diaspora, right, they keep on producing these type of videos because they know very well that in our country there are hypocrites who are ever willing to let down the country for political gains. So that's the thing. And we know uh, the Australian Federal Police and also the FBI Federal Bureau of Investigation of USA, they have conducted investigations and also the US Department of Justice, they are given a verdict. So all these international investigations prove that these allegations are baseless and false. So of those people whom I said about this hypocrisy, we, I think we as a nation, we should be ashamed. Indeed, uh, sir, this looks like another attempt to tarnish the image of this country by putting the whole judicial process and the investigations to questions. Uh, um, I know you closely worked with uh, former President Gota Rajapaksa. You uh, uh, were his uh, Minister of uh, Public Security. Do you see any truth in the accusations uh, made by the Media Secretary of uh, Pillar? Yeah, this person, Asad Maulana, I think he was uh, the Media Secretary of the TMVP and he robbed the money from the secretary from the secretariat and then uh, ran away and then now living in exile so why he has taken such a long, long time to come out with this so-called truth you see the channel 4 has planned to release the document just to coincide with the human rights uh, geneva uh, session and they are doing that regularly to tarnish the name of the good image of the sri lankan forces and the intelligence services and Saharan very, uh, very clearly in his last video just before the attack, he said that he is doing that uh, in retaliation to these uh, Muslim devotees who were killed in this Christchurch in New Zealand. And he says that he, is, uh, he and his father, mother, parents, uh, the children, the wife and all of them are sacrificing uh, their lives uh, in the name of Allah. He never said that he is doing that to bring uh, Gota before power. So why should he lie just before he die? So that is my question. And um, Saharam was expelled, uh, expelled from the Madrasa schools in uh, in Sainte Marudu, and he, he is a known uh, extremist, and he was a terrorist who were trying to take revenge. And I must say, Maish, at the same time, uh, the now uh, the the Hapal government now who are in the opposition, they must take the full responsibility uh, of this uh, Easter Sunday attack because uh, a few weeks before the attack, uh, the intelligence services have categorically said in, write, in, in written form, they have informed the government to arrest Saharan. Since we had arrested Saharan, this uh, attack wouldn't have happened. So they did not do that. And they had at the same time, there have been 10 incidents before the attack, right? And the government was very reluctant to take action because uh, national security was compromised to uh, to gain the political advantage. That's the thing. You know, at Vanath Villua, they have detected the uh, explosive dump. It was not investigation properly. And the Taslim who had given the uh, information was shot at. And also Maun and the Buddhist uh, statues were destroyed. And some politicians prevented uh, from uh, arresting them. And also Indian uh, intelligence services very clearly said that on this day, uh, the attack will take place, but the government did not take action. So as I said before, they have compromised national security for political gain. So therefore, opposition has no right to talk, ask about the investigation. Indeed, all right, uh, Parliamentarian Admiral Sarathwira Sekera, uh, we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much, sir.
Now, one of the most prominent accusations made by the star witness of this mockumentary is that Major General Saleh had a secret meeting he organized to plan the mass murder event. The only problem with that statement is that the time frame doesn't add up and the Sri Lankan government, uh, as the Sri Lankan government posted Major General Saleh on a diplomatic mission in Malaysia. So as you know, protocol dictates that if you are working for a foreign mission, all your movements are accounted for. Channel 4 just had to check with the foreign ministry about his movements to verify the dates of his star witness to see whether that the Major General was in Sri Lanka at that time. We all know Channel 4 didn't. However, the mockumentary reported this fact after the Major General denied it. When you lie, it's hard to keep the lie alive. Listen to what the 41st Chief Justice had to say about this. Watch. They don't align. You see, when you make up a story, now you know how to make up a story. <laughs> when you make up a story, your elements must align. Yeah. Now, if you are fabricating a story, well, that's the basic thing. A person who is fabricating a story. Your elements must align. Even if you are writing a novel, yeah. your elements must to align. <laughs> yeah. So, that, there is no alignment of these elements of this story. There is no alignment. And they are just thrown up, thrown up with an ulterior objective. Now, this country is not given a chance to settle down. Yeah. Now, that's, that's my main concern. That was the Chief, uh, 41st Chief Justice of Sri Lanka, Sarath N. Silva. Now, if you are making accusations, you need to be ready to prove them in a court of law. So how strong and credible are the facts presented by this mockumentary of Channel 4? Joining me now is President's Counsel, Thiranta Balaliyadda. Thank you very much, for, sir, for being here. Appreciate it. Now, hypothetically, the evidence uh, mentioned in this mockumentary is basically hearsay. Can it stand in a court of law? Mahesh, uh, my dear old friend, the people who did this video, I don't think they even thought about the law. You know, this is using parts of the video, I will uh, demonstrate you certain things on that which you can come to your own conclusion. You see, there is a, I have a theory, you know, that, you see, uh, there is a difference between making an allegation, right, there is a difference between making an allegation and then looking for facts to establish it and looking at the facts and making the allegation. The logical process is the second process. What is happening here is they make a statement and try to prove it. You see, with, uh, looking and looking for facts to prove it. So that is, that is not the logical process, not the scientific process. That is what is happening here. You see, now this biggest, uh, the, the biggest uh, impact here was a, was a video saying that, you know, this Saleh, my, this Saleh, the military intelligence man, met with Saharan and his crowd at some lonely spot in a hut. Uh, there is a video footage of it. You know what I mean? So, I think the people may believe that this is actually Saleh meeting Saharan, which it is not. You will see as you, as you go to the, as you start the video at that point, there is a flash a two or three second flash which says reconstructed, reconstructed. That will be missed by a lot of people. It is it is a video that has been done recently, you know, based on what the Maulana chap is saying. They have reconstructed the video showing that Saleh is meeting these people, you know. And they say a white van comes in. And they show a white van coming in. Right? Then the six people got out of the van and they show the two or three people getting down from the van and with their backs to the camera and even those are blurred right and then they show somebody shaking somebody's hands in the van shook hands with Sahara right and says Saharan is the man that this is Saleh meeting Saharan you see this was a play that was enacted very recently it had Saleh or Sahara nobody is in that in that business you know in that in that video so people I think <laughs> have been misled very badly that this is a video of this particular meeting, you know what I mean? So, I really don't think there is anything much to get worked up about this, this affair. You know, it is just a, shall we say, a bit of a, uh, 
not a very relevant issue here, you know. Then there is a, another thing here, you know. As far as I know, uh, the commentator himself says at the beginning of the interview, at the beginning of the story, right, that uh, IS claimed responsibility for this on the same day. So, if the IS has claimed responsibility, I don't know why these people are jumping up and down and saying IS is not, not responsible, you know. It's not worth, this, this is not worth taking legal action on, you know. I, I think this should be just, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all right, let's leave it at that. Thank you very much. That was President's Counsel, Thiran Favalli. Let's take a short commercial break. More on this story and more State of the Nation coming right up. Back in a moment.